Come gather around sports fans, listen close to the tale of two jokers, Zach and Jake, they're coming at you. You got the stories, the laughs, and all the sports, it's the Flurry Sports Podcast, ain't nothing like it before. Zach's got the wit, Jake's got the charm, they're talking all things sports, keeping it warm. From football to basketball, hockey to baseball, every episode's a hit, it's a guaranteed ball. So let's get moving, swing to the Flurry Sports Group. Listen up and let your worries just snooze. Grab your popcorn, settle in, let's have a blast. With Zach and Jake, the Flurry Sports Podcast. Podcast! Wow. It's got to be the most catchy one that we've had. We I got think. a contender, folks. We've got a contender. I do have the charm. How are you doing today? I feel great. I want AI to just keep complimenting me. And I didn't prompt that at all. I just said the podcast is Zach and Jake and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know what? I'm like, yeah, you're the heart of the show. <laughs> AI really, really cut through that. That This is the most catchy. I've been singing this around my house for the past week. It's when insane. that chorus comes back in. Huge. We're hits. rocking. Welcome back to the Flurry Sports Podcast. And uh, dare I say, welcome back to the ranking show. Because everyone... Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. This first part of the show is a crossover. For those who don't know us, or don't know Jake, I should say. Yeah, true. Um, for the, the ranking show, usually it's myself, Trevor, and Luke. We usually have a special guest on. Today, we are going to be ranking all of the WrestleMania matches. And to do that, I'm bringing on Jake Osman, who is my co-host for the Flurry Sports Podcast. If you like this, definitely go over there and listen to the Flurry Sports Podcast. A lot of goofs about sports and later on in the show we actually do have a segment with jake's dad hating on college coaches it's going to be pretty fun it's going to be a game uh if i win i'll get 10 bucks so definitely go over there and see if i won or not um but yeah we're just going to be talking about wrestlemania before before we get to that i should say i guess the women's college national championship happened jake and congratulations to iowa for losing the biggest accomplishment in sports that's all I've heard about today. Caitlin Clark did everything she could have, everything there is to accomplish in college sports. She did. So congratulations to her. Yeah. And congrats to Don Staley for congratulating Iowa. Um, I think that was her big accomplishment of that. Uh, that was good. It is, uh, you know what? It is one of my favorite sports stories is can the team with one really great player overcome the team that's better than them in every way? Um, mm-hmm. you know, cause that was crazy. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched a basketball team. Like she, uh, Caitlin Clark can score at will, which is fun to watch. Uh, South Carolina looked like they were actively trying not to just go on 11 point runs the whole time. I mean, they're better. I, it's, I wish, I wish anyone knew who won. No one knows who won the game. If you ask most people who won the national championship they'll probably still say iowa or they know iowa Iowa. lost yeah either (laughs) iowa or not iowa but like who who knows who knows because it was just all caitlin clark today still i know which is a shame because guess who's gonna be really good again next year south South carolina uh (laughs) you know who's not gonna be very good next year who oh guys (laughs) yeah no kidding no kidding. I did hear a lot today. Like, well, if Caitlin had a better team, then she would have won. Okay, fine. Fine. Why couldn't they have recruited people to play with Caitlin Clark? Why do you think they could not I understand. It's a shame that the one good white college basketball girl lost. And now we've got nothing to talk about. A team that should have won did. But the white girl lost. So we don't care anymore. We don't care. That's right. And that's why, Zach, we now turn our attention to the big interracial hope that is right it is zach edy his time to shine can he... interracial hope yeah <laughs> you know it's not quite catchy but it is i believe ethnically accurate um so uh i want to start something here it's we've amazing. given zach edy a lot of shit if you've listened to the show ranking fans you don't maybe know this but we've given him quite a bit of shit a video has gone around recently that i don't think matters at all and I don't know why we care of him going into a, I believe, normal-sized room that looks like a cabinet. 
uh, with just a Haven't girl at a party. It. Have you seen this? It was like it was like Zach Eady caught in the act, and he's at a party with a gal who I believe is his girlfriend. They just go into another room, and everyone's like, "What is he up to?" And I'm like, "I don't know. He's a <laughs> college student. He's not yeah. like he didn't hit her on the head and drag her into a room. They're just going into a room together. I don't know. Can we just have a fun basketball game? No, we cannot. <laughs> we cannot." Everything's a story when the seven foot five guys. I mean, you know, you're six eight, and it, I would say, like, what's where's Jake going? He's walking. I, into that room. I will say, if I could nitpick my own nitpick, I did also hear a lot of people who were like, "Why were they videotaping him?" And I'm like, I've been random places and been videotaped because I, how am I going to fit into that door? Yeah, <laughs> it's the let's, video. Well, if let's see what happens here. <laughs> A hundred percent. That was one time I worked in the house construction instead of helping me carry something through two by fours because I had to tiptoe through them. People just took photos of me. I was like, this is incredibly unhelpful. Um, but, you know, tonight as we record this, all go UConn. I mean, uh, yeah. it's the game we all wanted. And now we get to see it. So it's, it's actually the game neither of us wanted. But here we no. are. No. No, I, 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 I'm cheering for UConn too. I don't know why people would cheer for Purdue, but you know, it's a little bit of a redemption story. Plus UConn just won. So I understand those pieces of it. I, it's one of those where it's like, I hope the game is as good as advertised. Uh, It'll be interesting if it out earns LSU, Iowa on the women's Mm -hmm. side. Um, I think it will, but also that was a Friday night and have Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese in it. So we'll see. I hate the Monday national championship. Yeah. I'm trying to watch raw, (laughs) you know? Yeah. 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 I I'm not into it. And I'm also not into redemption stories, which I think we will find out later in the show. Pretty big redemption story actually uh, happened at WrestleMania. I Listen, I don't want to I don't want to blow up anyone's spot cuz I think the fun of this show is finding out what people's opinions are. Zach yes. Zach I I could put money on what I think Zach's favorite match was and it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> um probably. You probably could. Um but yeah, so what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be doing a tier ranking of every single WrestleMania match. And this is what we'll preface this with. Usually, Can I give one WrestleMania 40 match, right? We're not going through every single <laughs> video. Yeah, okay, thank you. Correct, yes. WrestleMania 40, the two-night show that just happened. We're not going through the previous 39 WrestleManias, even though... Jackass match. <laughs> S tier. I mean, yes, that was the best one. Um, Jake is a current wrestling fan, like... And the, the everyday wrestling fan, I will yeah. say. And I am the old school wrestling fan who has come back and uh, I pay attention to like some clips on social media and then I'll watch WrestleMania and I'll watch Royal Rumble. That's kind of where I'm at. Every once in a while, I'll dip in and out, but I live through social clips for the most mm-hmm. part. So those are the two different mindsets we're talking about here. And then also I should say, spoiler alert, for all of these matches, <laughs> if, yeah, correct. if you, for some reason, are a wrestling fan who found yourself on this video and don't want it spoiled, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. But we are for sure going to be spoiling every match, I assume. And maybe telling you which ones y- you should go back and watch. Right. If you're maybe an old school wrestling fan who didn't watch live, maybe you watch yeah. college basketball, maybe you don't know if it's worth it, maybe whatever, for sure we will be giving you the matches you should go specifically watch and you'll have the perspectives of the casual and the diehard. So um, if we agree on a match, then, you know, you can take that to the bank, I suppose. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. So we got here our tier rankings and I think I have the matches in order. So let me find my tab. The number one tier, as always, is the God tier. It's going to be hard to get there, but I think some may get there. Then we got a damn good match, a decent match, and then the lowest is meh. And I'm putting meh as the lowest this week because I don't think there's any bad matches. I will say that. No, I think, and this could be spoilers for what ends up going there, I think there was one I really disliked, and the people involved were also involved on night two, and I, they had a good night too. So I'm sure. willing to forgive it. 
very fair. And usually we have three, so it's easy to balance it out. But, you know, if we're on opposite ends of the spectrum or whatever, we will balance and default to the higher one. I'll just say that. Because we're oh, it's WrestleMania. Nice. It's, the, it's the Monday after WrestleMania. We're being positive. Everything was good. New era, the Triple H era. Well, and what a good call by you, Zach, because people are listening to this because this is what I do. You enjoyed the show, and you want to hear other people enjoyed the show, so let me start there. This is the most fun I've ever had watching a wrestling show. Um, hmm. I, I got to, besides maybe Jackass Mania, <laughs> uh, <laughs> course, which is yeah. also where Brock came out of the tractor, I believe. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's that tough. You know, that's a tough mania to be. But uh, And we watched that one together. But this one uh, I watched with friends on night one, and then – watched uh, a lot of stuff back very late night too. So yeah, I can't wait to talk about it because uh, regarded already is one of the best manias of all time. So I can't wait to get into it. And I, I think we'll find this out, but I will just say off the top, I think night two head, head and shoulders better than night one. Correct. And what do you think of the declaring this as the triple H era? Do you think that was overkill saying it so many times? Do you agree with it? Like, what's your thoughts on that? WWE is very smart in this way. They're not telling you that because we didn't know it. They're telling you that so that when we guess when they, you know, they declared the attitude era, like a good six months, a year into the attitude area. So you couldn't go back and watch kind of the shit that started it. Um, It hasn't been all roses since Triple H joined. And I think it's very smart that they're like, now that he has total, complete control and he knew the show was going to be a banger, like he booked last year's mania. Like, sure. so I, I think it's a little like, I don't know if this is the start of it, but I, I understand why they're putting the prints on it here because it's going to be so positively received and what a good positive start for it. I certainly think it's his era. I just don't know if it started today. That okay. Yeah, that's very fair. Very fair. But let's just start then. Night one, match one. We had Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. That was for the women's championship, one of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, you know, we'll go back and forth with opinions first, I'll say. And for this one, I thought this was the best of the women's matches. There were three, I yeah. believe. Um, I thought the wrestling was good, which I think is very, very, very hit or miss with women. Uh the the talent that they have currently with women's wrestlers and that's not a slate on them they don't make it in on camera very often so yeah. um, we're getting better at it but i i agree with that yeah yeah i thought it was damn good i would put it in that second tier i thought it was really a really good match uh, i'm glad you're there so strongly on it because i was in between decent and damn good and i honestly think some of that is i liked night two so much more than night one that i was like for this to start night one i'm like uh but it was killer i think you could make an argument that the person who was presented the best on either night was rhea ripley i mean the entrance with uh the live band and uh she just looked like a badass the whole time and to your point just a, a really good match I, the reason I was on the line is because this to me was one of the most predictable matches on either night. Uh, but awesome. I wish Becky's storyline wasn't, I have a book, uh, (laughs) for this match. I was really excited about, but what a good match as good in the ring as anything on either night, I think. And again, so Jake has more background on all of these fights and I have pretty surface level so I didn't really know the storyline going in. So your criticisms, I'm sure, are fair. Mine was almost solely just the in-ring and entry. I like stuff. that. Okay. That'll be a good dichotomy because some of these let me down maybe more or I liked more because of what led up to it. But, yeah, I weird that she just had a belt that was her book. <laughs> yeah, that is. And I did know she had a book <laughs> coming in. That is something I was told about somewhere. I don't remember where, but. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Oh, I think Mick Foley actually. I watched the Mick Foley video. Um, so I I went damn good. Where are you at? I agree, damn good. Okay. Next one was the six tag ladder match, which coming in, I I call I told Lindsay who I watched it with. I think this is going to be my favorite match of all of Mania because it just seemed it was built 
in a way where it's just going to be complete chaos. And I thought it was pretty good for the most part. Um, I'm a huge R-Truth guy. Correct. Yeah. So he won twice, which I think <laughs> is pretty cool. Um, I'm in between decent and damn good. I'd like to hear what you have to say, though. Uh, for me, damn good. Uh, okay. I love like goofy over the top wrestling. I was so excited about thinking back about how much more I like night two. I like this show start a lot. Um, the mm -hmm. hot tag and pin spot is great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really liked the stipulation. I liked that there were two separate things people were going for. I really liked the spot where after I thought it was weird how quick one of the belts got one so yeah, like yeah. i think the match took a while to warm up but i like that once uh a town down under won the first belt we had that moment where they stopped a different team from winning i was like oh my god new day is gonna win and they came back which i was like i didn't even think about them still being involved so i thought mm -hmm. that was well booked and there were some spots where i'm like this is this is fucking killer yeah. um I, I don't think like a normal ladder match where there's, you know, as many crazy spots, but uh, for me, damn good, simply because uh, our truth winning is like incredible. That was really, really good. Uh, yeah, I to me, it's better than decent because I would rewatch it. I would too. I would too. To your knowledge, have they done a match like this before? The both tag titles and ladder? No, no. Okay. And, uh, did it specifically to split the belts. They've never done it, and to my knowledge, in this way. This is the first time this type of match has ever happened. Cool. I mean, that's honestly a cool thing, too. Yeah, yeah. I like the structure, rules, whatever you want to say. Okay, so this next one was the Mysterio tag team with two other people that I didn't know. Um, Correct. What's your thoughts on this one? Well, it gets... I had more fun with it than I thought I would uh had i my thoughts because i'll be comfortable sharing them as someone who's watching it this was thrown together at the last minute i mean they they subbed out lee um for andrade which i liked because i thought andrade came over the best in this match i thought he looked so good um yeah. so i like that but i i like ray and dominic haven't been feuding all year they started up again like a few weeks ago so not a ton of build. I thought they gave it pretty decent on SmackDown. And I I loved that they this was the spot where they got Jason Kelsey involved. Um mm -hmm. was funny. Um, and that was a good ending, but not it I was expecting this to be meh, and for me it was decent. Yeah, I think I'm around meh to decent as well. So we'll put it in decent. It just yeah, it didn't it just didn't seem like well, it's also tough because we just came off of two championship matches and there really yeah. wasn't anything on the line and it just felt that way. And I didn't know there was no storyline truly coming in other than I've seen Ray and Dominic fight in the, like the last right. two pay-per-views I've seen, which are the only two pay-per-views I've seen in the past year, I guess, technically. Um, so yeah, it just seems like we haven't gone anywhere with that story, which is weird. And I feel like they could have gone more fun. Like, it's like, yeah. I, I feel like they played it a little too balanced. Like, if you were going to have two Philadelphia Eagles come out of Luchador Mass and they slingshot the one guy 50 feet, like, yeah. let's do it the whole time. Like, let's have a stipulation. I, I mean, and maybe I'm comparing it to a match I think we're going to like a lot more on night two, but I think yeah. you could have had more fun with it. So I agree for where it's at. Uh, I'm interested if we agree in our opinions on this next one, which... Uh, is brother versus brother, Uso versus Uso. Yeah, so the Usos fought again. I very slightly know the storyline. I knew one of them left the bloodline, and that's yeah. about all I truly know. And, I mean, the Lil Wayne entrance is cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, I really... Are they leaning really hard in the whole into the whole yeet? thing <laughs> like that i didn't like that that just They're really super lame. well the crowd got really into it so now it's his whole thing yeah that seemed lame this seemed like the most mickey mouse yeah sort of thing i don't like these are like the the elementary schools uh wrestlers it felt like this like this one wasn't for me this one was for the elementary kids who are still up watching so 
I thought this was decent. I don't think it was bad. Uh, a lot of kicking. <laughs> they they really like their kicks. Yeah. Um, that's about it for me. I mean, the background narrative I would give is I feel like the talk online is that this match ruined night one. Uh, I, really? Really yeah. poorly well-received. Uh, very, I don't know why I threw the word well in there. Very poorly received. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I think, to me, the most disappointing part is the story was – I feel like they had to pick an angle. I feel like they didn't make the story here as good as it could have been because I don't think they wanted to take away from the other bloodline stuff, which I understand. Yeah. I don't know then why you just have them spamming the same two moves yeah. over and over again. It did feel like in the video games when you try and make two tag team wrestlers <laughs> fight each other and they only knew yeah. five moves. Like I'm like, why why do I feel like your overall is 82? Like <laughs> why do you feel like you don't yeah. know as much as this other character? So I just thought they were going to come in and get really creative with it. It didn't feel particularly heated. I also, my hope is that the next time we see them, it's like first blood or just like the something more intense than like, let's just, yeah. that's my only hope is they were saving stuff for next time. Uh, I am with you probably fairly. I don't think it's bad. I think it's meh. Because I did laugh at parts of it, and I did, like, I was pumped that Jay won. So I think they did that part good. Uh, and I care about it. I just think they could have done it better. So for me, it's a meh. I'll actually change mine to meh then. Um, the way you're talking, it did completely remind me of if you're playing Street Fighter with your friend and you both pick the same character, and it's just kick, kick, yes. kick, 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 kick. That's all it was. It was, yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't great. Um, next one was the uh 3v3 yeah. women's match. There was no stakes, right? No stakes. Uh kind of the stakes were like the one team uh damage control is EO's entourage. So it was like we're gonna fight you so the numbers don't get in the way of the other match tomorrow night. So I think is kind of the thing. Like we're fighting back against the bad guys. Uh yeah, what were your thoughts here? The shortest match maybe on either night, I think. Felt uh, that way? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think this was probably my probably my second least favorite match of the entire two-night card. Uh, it, it was just pretty boring for mm -hmm. the most part. Nothing really happened. And as soon as they said something about how Naomi would be like the most winningest woman wrestler in WrestleMania history or something, yeah. It feels like, oh, this is her make right from the shit that happened before. So mm -hmm. um, I thought it was decent. It for sure wasn't bad. There was some okay spots, but I, it just, it seemed very one note. There weren't really very many highs in this one. Yeah, I'm totally with you. I think it's decent. I don't think they were given a lot. Like I said, it was quick. It was also clearly the most predictable match. Like, I think that speaks volumes well that you picked up on Naomi's pieces being predictable. Cause to me, that was like, she was the least obvious winner and she was still obvious because Bianca is undefeated at WrestleMania. Uh, no. and very not secretly. They're like, let's give her an undertaker run. Uh, so sure. I think we've got that in our future, uh, probably. And so they wanted to keep that ball rolling and jade is new and is like the thing i think yeah. they tried to put over in this match so uh for all of those reasons it was very obvious i wish they could have done more this was another one where it's like now that i'm seeing it through i guess this isn't you can't really call this a criticism because they just didn't do it uh th none of the matches all night besides the ladder match really had a stipulation i this could have been but they probably just didn't want to give it more time, but make this like a tables match or something. Like I think that would have mm -hmm. been pretty fun. Um, all the women involved to your point, the reason for me, it's decent. I came out liking some of the women involved more. So I'm like, they didn't do much, but it's like, I think Jade's kick ass. I, I really, <laughs> she's strong. yeah, she's strong. <laughs> and, uh, I, the only thing I left was like, I can't wait for her and Bianca to go at it. I think that feud is going to be, um just who can hold each other the air 
the longest yeah. amount of time, which uh, I'll be here for. So I, I will say though, I now think we are through all of the matches that I would call like not good, which I'm excited about. I think. Interesting. Cause we have one next that we will for sure disagree on. Uh, wow. Have- that's right. Oh, I totally forgot about this. Yeah. We're going to hard disagree. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So we have the Nazi versus the Muppet in <laughs> Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Boy, I if neither person could win this match, that would have been great. Yeah, you're not um, in on either of these. I didn't even no. think about that. Yeah. Like I I I don't understand Gunther. Like truly, so he's funny. just a Nazi. That's all that's his character. And he just slaps people. He's a bad um, guy. Neither of these guys are particularly interesting to me. Like, like in terms of like wrestling style, in terms of personality. Yeah. And they tried to put Sami Zayn over really hard, obviously in the, like the entrance thing. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was decent. It wasn't bad by any means, but it was just slow moving slaps until (laughs) Sami Zayn had his Hulk Hogan moment. That's about it. Spasms. Um, I will, I will say one thing that I do love listening there, because if any wrestling fans are listening, I I think one, you just don't like Gunther, and I love that. No. You've been consistent in it. He's not your dude. I, I appreciate that you've been like at the first time we saw him, you're like, no, nah, I'm out. Uh, which <laughs> I like. Uh I think he probably Sorry, I took a history class before. That's I right. heard what the Germans did. I think he's probably the wrestler on the whole roster you miss the most by not watching weekly, only because no. He truly, I don't know if has a character beyond he wrestles every week and I just don't know how you beat him. Like, I think that's the story is like, he's big and he's bad and he takes this thing really seriously, Uh, which I will say, I'm just bummed this match wasn't built more. I'm with you that Mm. suddenly (laughs) Sammy's wife and kid were in the back and it's like, this is do or die. And I'm like, why is it do or die? I You... (laughs) won this opportunity like a month ago maybe uh so i like that we get new stuff from gunther now and hopefully stuff that you're into more we'll find out but uh i think sammy deserved it uh but i his character a year ago to now is kind of sad to me he was so like must watch with the bloodline stuff he was the best part of that and like Mm -hmm. he didn't have that in here and i think you could have done that if you just had more build uh, for me, I'm fine with it landing in decent. I would have put it damn good simply for the in-ring stuff. I know that it was all big build, but – and I've always kind of thought this with you and Gunther. I think Gunther does a good job on making you boo just with moves. And I thought he did a good job here of, like, going out, mocking the wife, coming back in, like, not taking <laughs> yeah. it seriously. And then I honestly thought, like, the end sequence was – killer i thought the brain buster on the the apron and everything else was really good uh i think they're pretty clearly also saving something for a follow-up but all that said i'm totally fine with it landing and decent and excited to i i feel like this main event is going to get lost in the shuffles of time a little bit with what happened night two i think but i'll be curious what you think about our main event of night one it's Seth and uh, Cody versus the bloodline rock and Roman. Yeah. So um, I think the rock had a couple of okay moments in this match, but truthfully, like it is, there's zero stakes. There were like, it was the biggest, nothing of a match. Very I, I predictable. Was, very they predictable. They were going to win. Yeah. So slow to start. Um, I know. Do you think the second half made up for it? I, I don't it, know it why they started for it. It so for sure got slow. better, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was so slow. The The Rock expressing, like, his power, I suppose. The Like, yeah. I, I like him leaning into, I'm the owner of the company, essentially. I think that's fun. That's a good bit. Um, that's well, a good... He's so entertaining. I mean, everything he yeah. said to Cody's mom. And, I mean, that's the yeah. clip I think that's been making the most rounds. But him telling the ref, if you count, you're fired. Um, is, is great. And I liked, uh, I liked for me, the reason I'd say it's damn good is 
I do think the ending gets it there for me. And I, I think the big reason why is I like that Roman didn't get a pin either night. I like that they built up. Mm. They saved the rock, but they also let him get the shine. Uh, and I thought that was very smart booking. Uh, and yeah, I'm not going to lie. I end of night one, I would have called this decent. And now that it, night two is passed, I'm like, good good build <laughs> good setup um because they did everything like seth being banged up after this match mattered and cody getting pinned by the rock and looking yeah, like that made night two i think more dramatic i i think you could have gone there differently but for me it's damn good but i'll be interested what you think here I, I thought it was meh. It was one of my least favorite of the night, I think. I think we go decent then. I And yeah. I think that's fair. I Because I think for me, I'm definitely more stuck on the booking side of like, I like that we got this match instead of <laughs> what they wanted to do, which is Rock Roman. Uh, but sure. the match itself, I think it's fine that it's decent. And uh, this is the match I'm most excited to see you rating on out of the whole show, which is the match one of night two. Yeah, match one of night two, and I think we take take everything into account. 100% so, cash in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so Drew McIntyre fought Seth Rollins for the championship. And again, big spoiler alert. Um, afterwards, what was trending on Twitter as bisexual Undertaker came out and <laughs> <laughs> cashed in and got the championship. Um, over... If it was if it was cut off just before the cash in, yeah, I, I I think I hated it. Um, to be completely honest, yeah, I think that's fair. I for sure decent. Yeah, at the, like at the most, you know, like there are some okay spots, but to your point about the tag match, which was cool that Seth, you know, got hurt and it mattered. Yeah. It just made the wrestling worse though, too. Correct. I almost think with what happened. I don't know if Seth needed as much offense as he got. I think this whole thing could have been a little shorter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is hard to just separate that first piece, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, 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 I think I hate Drew McIntyre. Truthfully, I, and I used to like him. I think he's talented. I just hate his character right now, a lot. Yeah, I think it's about to change. Uh, based on the end of this match, because I think he got his comeuppance. Yeah, like CM Punk was in the announcer table for night two the whole time, right? Nope, just this match. Oh, just this match. And then he was there for the end, I guess. He came out or whatever. Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hate... I Like, I side with CM Punk so much with the McIntyre yeah. shit. Like, it's it, it feels really annoying. Like every time he's like, you, you're obsessed with me. Like, bro, my name's on your t-shirt. Like you just, it, it, the whole, take a picture of this, like be with CM Punk being in the picture. I hate that. I hate everything about it. So did you like um, him tweeting mid match? Cause I loved it. That was very funny. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see that till today though. Yeah. Um, bored at work. LOL. <laughs> yeah. Then fuck. Um, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I would put it in decent. I think. Wow. Okay. I pretty comfortably am going to be in damn good. I, uh, because I think this is one watching the weekly stuff and maybe this will make you feel different about it. I think the story going in, I just love that the story coming in was ev everybody was right. And everybody was wrong. Like mm -hmm. Seth's thing coming in is I can do it all. And both sides are equally as important to me, but clearly as we saw by the end of the night, costing Roman was more important. Uh, yeah. Drew, whole point was, you're not taking this seriously. It's going to, like, one, hurt our moment and, like, hurt my moment, and people won't give me as much credit. And two, it's going to cost you because you're not focusing on the person in front of you. And all of that happened. And then Drew also wasn't focusing on the person in front of him. And I, I love I love that someone said this today and maybe that just stuck with me. I love that drew could have just been happy and left, but of course he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Cause his whole character is he's a bitter whiner. So he had yeah. to like say one more word and that's like what cost him. I think, I think it's great that drew cost himself his moment and not Seth 
And somehow, without wrestling, Punk being up on top uh, was really good. I will also say, mm-hmm. to the point of the wrestling not being great, um, I I thought it was I thought the wrestling was decent, and uh, I did not think you could get me to care about a Damian Priest cash in, and I am now like excited of where that goes, knowing that we have to get it on Punk, um, right. and very specifically have to get it on Punk before they go to Glasgow. Um, where that's I that has to be where we're going now is we're gonna get a McIntyre face turn and it's gonna Ooh. be McIntyre punk. Um gotcha. but perhaps I'm more excited about that than everything. But I guess the reason my short reason why it's damn good, I I was immediately more excited about night two after this match. Like we got a cash in, we got like these cool sure. story moments, and I was like, let's go. We're like ready to rock. I think this will be a theme. But truthfully, like everything on night two, it just felt like bigger, which is like what WrestleMania should be. It didn't feel like WrestleMania night one to me. And the the fact that we're ending with a match that had zero stakes and zero and kind of importance because we knew the opposite would happen the next night. Like it, it just felt weird. It didn't feel like WrestleMania on night one. I agree. I think they over responded like big entrances. No, why were the entrances so meh all weekend? Um, they need better entrances. They need better music. I thought that was yeah. pretty apparent the whole time. I will say, I think they over course corrected. So I can't wait for next year. The last two times they've done this two night thing, night one was way better than night two. So mm, I think okay. I think they held everything back so that that was clearly not going to be the case. And I'm excited for next year where they just like don't care about that and. Yeah. go for it um i would also say if that's actually what they were going for uh people would have liked night two more last year if they had gotten the ending they wanted so uh <laughs> i think that's really all you had to do but i agree and i think it shows that because in this next one talk about nothing being on the line but it being a blast um one last thing about or two last things about this past match and part of it's this and the very end i thought the little things cm punk did during the night made me like him more. Like I thought he was really good. Correct. For WrestleMania in the company. And then two, this had, this match had one of my favorite ongoing bits of, if you hit somebody with a brace, it's the most deadly weapon of all time, <laughs> which I think is very fun. That was really um, good. I will say the other thing that made me think of, uh, I, three characters. I know you said you hate drew. Uh, I'm invested in all three people leaving it. Uh, Sure. Which, and I guess four if you count Priest. So I I think that's a success in that too. But now we move on, Zach, perhaps yeah. to the most anticipated match of the night. Okay, so the Philadelphia Street fight <laughs> with Street Profits and other people. Don't know who the other people are. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. don't know the test of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I bet was it known that Bubba Ray Dudley was going to be the fucking guest ref? They announced it here. Holy shit. I was so excited. <laughs> I was very, very excited for this. Um, couldn't have been a better pick. Couldn't have been a better pick. Um, what a smart... That, this match had literally no... No one cared about this sure. match. And to just put all of this fun shit in it was yeah. so smart. The the Dudley boy spots. So good. That, that In terms of individual moments... The Dudley Boy spots in this one were my, probably my highlight of all fucking thing. It, yeah. it, it was very, it was for sure an old school nod, but putting the glasses on so funny. That push, oh god, it was so good, so good. I will say, learned to set up a fucking table. I was, I was losing my mind. The it, table it gave really up irritated. on him, man. That's not their fault. The table gave up on him. No, like you can see the leg folding in. I'm like, lock the damn leg. It's gonna happen again. It almost happened again. Um, I mean, without the Bubba Ray doing stuff at the end, it was not a good match. Um, I'll put in decent. I'll be fair. I'll put in decent. Oh, why are you being? No, it's damn good. Okay, fine. It's damn good. It's damn good. It's got Bubba Ray Dudley. What are we talking about? It's think of what this match is versus night one. This match true. True. was a filler. 
And what a fun, like, that's the reason, this match is, I think, maybe the biggest reason why night two, this being, I think, the worst match of the night, for me anyway, is so mm-hmm. telling. Uh, sure. Or whatever match you pick, like, you might have a different one lower, but I think your lowest match this night is so much higher than the lowest match on night one. That's I think fair. that's the big difference. So, for me, like, damn good. I'd watch that match again today, you know? I, I almost did actually. Uh, that was so fun. It was a fun match. Um, okay, next one we got a coked out LA Knight versus AJ Styles. He was like, he needs to calm down. He a does need bit. to go down. Um, what's your thoughts on this match? I'm interested to know your thoughts. I was pleasantly surprised because the build for this i think is was another one people didn't super care about like i think it had all the feeling of like la knight needs something to do i guess aj styles doesn't like him uh there was a home invasion which i always love in a wrestling storyline but yeah uh i i i could watch la knight wrestle a broom like i know he's (laughs) coked out but for me this was i would say decent like i I think it was not as fun as the other one. It was a better match. So, like, if you go higher, I I would understand that. But this is the one where I'm like, they're going to do this match three more times. It was a good starter. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, this is a a skip and a rewatch. So, it it was decent. But for what I thought I was going to get, I think it really overachieved. Yeah, I'd put it in decent, too. I I thought it was, you know, it, it didn't. I can't re- remember most of the spots in that match. I would say like pretty much anything from it. It was just, it was fine. No, it was okay. Um, then we got that triple threat match for the USA title, Logan Paul <laughs> with a pride bottle, which I was excited to see again. Like, who's it going to be this time? Yeah. Randy Orton, who even Lindsay was like, I think Randy Orton's my favorite wrestler. Um, I thought he was great. He's and having Kevin the Owens run of his career. I he's like someone great. said this. He almost had to retire because of his latest injury, and I think he's come back and been like, "I love wrestling," and yeah. it's so fun. Starting with the entrance of Kevin Owens putting that <laughs> some bitch in reverse and getting Randy <laughs> to hop on the back was so fun. That Just was a couple a buddies spot. going yeah. to beat up a bad guy, and Randy on one hand being the coolest guy there, and also so clearly very old. It was funny, yeah. like him giving Kevin Owens the slow down sign coming down the ramp. <laughs> yeah, like he yeah. was not okay. He was like, whoa, 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 we're flying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like barking at I show speed. I like legitimately like kicking him. That made me very oh, happy. Oh, he sent him. That was <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, And then Logan Paul with the douchiest awesome truck. Um. And yeah, the wrestling thought? was good. Like, wrestling was very good. All, three very good, good wrestlers. Yeah. I I hate Logan Paul, but I think in the way they want me to. Uh, like, I, I hate that he's this good at this thing that he's just picked up in his spare time. Uh, yeah. And what a finish. What a good finish with the RKO reversal and then Logan just sliming his way to a win. So, mm-hmm. and we didn't even mention they gave Kevin the same Sammy treatment. Like he came out for a pep talk first. Yeah. Uh, yeah that was weird. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was weird that they followed that up with him getting his go kart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. It was like a reveal. They didn't show him getting it, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I. <sighs> I mean, this is either my favorite or second favorite match, I think. Um, it's between God tier and damn good for me. I really enjoyed it. I did too. I, I, I say you'll make that decision because, uh, you know, Ty goes to the highest score, so that's up to you. For me, it's damn good. And my reason is it was predictable uh, for sure. me anyway uh, with more knowledge coming in. Like they uh, – SummerSlam is going to be in Cleveland where Logan Paul's from. So mm-hmm. that was going to be there and he wasn't going to drop it in a triple threat. Uh, but I could see it going higher. Like I, I liked that they made it like, no, we're not really fighting amongst ourselves. We're yeah. kind of just kicking your ass the whole time. Uh, and he got the better of him anyway. I, I thought it was very good. I don't 
like to me, I'm going to save God tier for like one of the best matches I've ever seen. That would be like my criteria. So, but this would be a great match on any mania for me. Yeah. I, I thought it was super, super entertaining in terms of entertainment. Like the Dudley spot was great, but it dipped off for, I mean, the first half was bad. This one was awesome the entire time. So in terms of this tier, for sure, my favorite. Yes. Um, then, then we get this one. Uh, Bailey versus somebody. Who EO. Is it? EO. I, this was my least favorite match. I really We're going to disagree that. on this a lot. Okay. Sounds good. Go for it. Um, obviously, not a big wrestling fan. Don't really know all the storylines. Every time I see her, I don't know why people like Bailey. I don't yeah. understand. I just don't. It doesn't click for me. I understand why people like God there. I just think those people are wrong and should read a history book. With Bailey, I don't get it. Is she Egyptian? What was that entrance? That was weird. I don't get the entrance. I'm I'm with you on the entrance. I don't get it. I, I and I just don't think <laughs> the EO is the other person. Is that her name? Yeah. Too much Yoko Ono energy. <laughs> I don't I can't do it. Too much screaming like Yoko. I love her character. I think it's so fun. I, I think every roster needs that. I, I It gives me such Tajiri vibes. <laughs> it is Tajiri vibes. For me, it's very clearly Matt for me. I really don't like it. I, okay, I'll, I'll just be honest with where I was at, and then we'll have to figure out where it goes. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I know where it ends up landing. I was sincerely in between God tier and damn good. Really? Uh, and some of it, is this is also what you're saying about Bailey makes so much sense. I've never thought of it that way. For I think wrestling fans, Bailey is like she is like maybe one of the most wasted potentials in the Vince era because in NXT she was like the babiest of baby faces. Like she was hugging kids and came out with these wacky inflatable arm things, and crowds were chanting like they were that night. And they came up to the roster and just didn't know what to do with her. Like, everyone was like, she's the most popular women's wrestler of all time. And they were like, ah, I guess we'll just put you in tags and, like, not do anything. So she had to turn heel, like, under the Triple H regime and, like, got herself back over um, and got this push. And, like, has never been given a moment. So that was, like, the story against someone she brought back into a stable. So... I thought the story could have been better, but I thought it was there. That's why I think I wouldn't put it got to yours because the story would have been there. I think for me, but I, all the stuff you're saying makes sense. The part I do have a question for you. I I really thought you would like the wrestling more because I thought for me, the reason it was between the line. I think in ring, this might be one of the best women's matches I've ever seen. Um, I I okay. just thought they did such a good job in the ring like telling that story of like eo is a killer and like she just was too intense like bailey just outgamed her um which i i like that eo at the end was just spamming finishers i like that she was flipping out of things i i thought it was a really good story to me i liked it more than the Rhea becky match but i i can get that being a toss-up but so that is why i've got it as high as i do but i think to meet in the middle, we should put it in decent. Well, I, you said you're between God tier and damn good. So I'm going to let you decide if you think it's fair to put it in decent or fair to put it in damn good. You're the wrestling, oh, the I wrestling mean, community here. I'm damn good. It's damn good. I, okay. I thought it was bold of you to say that Rhea Becky was better. I don't know if that has been the discourse. So I think um, not that this is what we should base it on, but just for your knowledge, you know, because it's always good to know. I think mm-hmm. this has been talked about in online and the things I've been reading and listening to today as like, was this the best match of mania besides the main event? Really? So I, I got bored. I had to get up. <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> but would it. you also agree? These are the two people you knew the least about besides I, maybe the jobbers with Bubba Ray. <laughs> <laughs> i had i have no i still don't know who fought street profits <laughs> yeah um, for sure <laughs> um n- no because i've seen both of them and weren't they in the same thing before correct they were in the yeah i get what you're talking about yeah they were in the same uh chamber match before okay i'm with you 
now here's the real question on how high does this last one land? I mean, is really what we're talking about. So it is the main yeah. event. Cody finishes the story. If you're a wrestling fan, you don't know that. I don't know what you did in the last 24 hours, but there you yeah. go. Uh, yeah, he, just to give a quick rundown, I guess, for folks who didn't watch it or just want to know, uh, you know, it was bloodline rules following the tag match the night before. So they started one-on-one. And then once Cody started to get a little bit of an upper hand, all shit literally hit the fan. I think the order of it went, yeah. J- Jimmy runs out. Uh, then Jay runs out and did something cooler than he did. Either of them did on night <laughs> one and <Yeah. laughs> spews him off the stage. Then I thought they did such a good job with Solo. Solo comes out and looks like he's going to like single-handedly win the match for Roman. Cody somehow kicks out of what cost him last year. Then Cena comes out like a cameo from a different movie. Um, and he beats up Solo, puts everyone through tables and stuff. Rock comes out. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this, because especially on like Rock. Because Rock comes out and him just cussing the whole way down is great. <laughs> yeah. And... He beats up Cena uh, in a very cool moment. And then, who had this on their bingo boards? Not broken glass, but a gong goes out. We get The Undertaker. Hell yeah. Fresh from a bike ride. Uh, <laughs> he he choke slams. Well, technically, before Taker, we had Seth. Seth comes out. Mm, he gets yeah. intercepted by Roman and then kind of stays there for a second. But then we've got The Undertaker stuff. So now it's just Roman, Seth, and Cody. And in the moment, I think people are talking about most and freaking out about online because it's such good storytelling. Uh, Seth was in his shield gear, and instead of hitting Cody with a chair, Roman chooses to rub salt in an old wound, hit Seth, and then Cody has enough time to reverse a spear, hit the moves, and uh, go home happy. So he wins kind of clean in the least clean match of all time. Uh, so I, I know what I think about it, but I am most curious about what you think about it. I think there's a couple of things they could have done a little better, but yeah, I mean, I, I went in cheering for Roman. I will say that. Like, I just, I don't, I don't think Cody Rose is interesting in the slightest bit. Um, but they did such a good job where I feel like even the people who were like in favor of Roman at the end were like super happy for Cody. Like, I think they did a great job there. I think it is kind of important that they included his wife. Like, I think that was a big deal. Correct. I thought that was cool. And um, his mom. Dude, I I was hoping <laughs> the Undertaker would choke slam that bitch. That's what I was hoping for. I'm not a Cody Rhodes. Mama Rhodes, he's uh, not, not a fan. You're a believer um, in The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, All of it was good. All of it was great. I like The Rock saying, get the fuck out of my rig. I like all of I love it all. I love it all. Um, the Undertaker spot. I understand. Wasn't there a thing where like they wanted Stone Cold and they couldn't come to an agreement or something to get him? That's the latest report is that he was a villain. Um, I think it's better with the Undertaker. I, I understand like the history with Stone Cold. It would have been cool. Uh, just another entrance at another like big like rundown and stuff like that. I just think would have taken too much time and like momentum away i also think it would have been more about the rock like true. That's true. austin rock is just about those two it like overshadows everything else whereas t- the taker gong was random enough that it yeah. kept me hype like i was like what the hell is going on like i um and i, I am so curious if it was a fill-in or not because i think people were just like Oh, it's good, but I mean, it'd been better if they got Austin, but it was good. And I, I, I mean, Roman faced Undertaker, um, okay. and was his last match. So th- now, oh, really? did they say that at all on commentary? No. <laughs> so I don't know if that was the reason they did it. Um, I think there's enough there that you can be like, yeah, the Undertaker doesn't like anybody involved. Um, he was ruined for Dusty's kid. I, I. It's you know the so way man. I took it? How do you take the way, it? The way I took it was like there's almost no Vince guy more than The Undertaker. And I thought it was cool that it was kind of like passing 
the torch almost and like it, getting the validation, getting everything. I thought it yeah. was like pretty, yeah, that was pretty cool. Some pretty symbolic. I like someone said, and it could be as simple as this. Well, I, I heard two theories. That I know you'll like this one that was serious and I kind of like it, which is even taking everything back. If the whole thing is, yeah, rock is this past generation of like, um, I, this is my ring. I run the show, whatever the undertaker would not like that. Like, so it's just a character thing mm-hmm. of like, he's always, that, that is what the undertaker has done for the past 30 years. Just kind of yeah. shown up and been mad about people saying things. Um, what do you mean? It's my yard. <laughs> and then hits him. Um, so yeah. I like that. Um, I saw someone online being like, no one hates Paul Heyman more than <laughs> the undertaker. <laughs> he came out to cost Brock's boy. Um, yeah. so I, I love that. Um, I, I will say that if the only detriment of a match is I can think of someone I wish would have ran in more, I don't know if that's yeah. a con. Like I liked, I loved that it was the undertaker. Who's not happy to see him. Like true. I, everyone has said Austin. I really think in my heart of hearts, if it wasn't for recent allegations, that would have been Brock. Probably. Cause we get Brock, Brock next mania though in Minnesota. Correct. Um, I also think that's why they didn't announce mania yet. I think they're going to let it cool down and then have Brock sure. announce it. Um, but Brock faced Cody. Um, that was his last feud and Cody kind of got past him. Like that was Brock's last thing was like, he gave Cody the stamp of approval. He hates Roman and he's still pissed at Heyman. Like mm-hmm. I think Brock's music hitting and his stupid grin and his cowboy that hat is he came, awesome as he came down to just ruin things yeah would have been great and very brock by the way of like if i'm not happy <laughs> yeah. no one is um so and apparently not that far off from his real life persona um allegedly but uh, so all that to say sure could have been someone else and it would have been awesome i for me i can't think of a part of the match i was surprised i watched it again today and I was surprised by how much I liked the wrestling like yeah. the whole time. Like Cody is damn good in the ring. Like, and to your point, when it was so clear, they wanted Cody to win. I don't know how Roman got me to root against him, uh, but he did. Uh, and I, I thought they played to perfection. So for me, it can't be like, it might be the best mania match I've ever watched. So for that reason, it's, it's God tier for me. I mean, yeah, it, it for sure is God tier. I wish when Undertaker disappeared and it, it seemed like everybody who came in disappeared as well, but they were just laying outside and they like popped yeah. up a little later. If everybody disappeared would have been incredible. I, th- I think that would have been really, really, really good. Um, Yeah, I, yeah. I like it only for the sense that I like we got the Seth moment. Um, we got the SNL after the show credits rolling moment yeah that was wild how long they kept the camera on was wild. i the only thing i wish they did with the undertaker i don't think undertaker interacted with roman at all i would have liked that a little bit because it 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 felt like a fill-in so i understand why people are saying that because it was it was like uh we need somebody ding (laughs) like it's just like he owes me money um so i just wish there was one more thing like like i i I texted you priest should have cashed it in like as they're like accepted like cody's doing his huge thing i wish he cashed it in and it could have just been everybody in the ring being the shit out of him then i think that's funny obviously it takes a moment away from cody but that would have been funny for me i also would have liked another undertaker gog like while everyone's excited (laughs) <laughs> and then everyone freaking out. Now you and owe can me just, a match. Yeah. Well, that or just turn the lights off, turn them back on, and then he's just in there happy for Cody. That's fun. That is yeah, that's the only way he <laughs> transports is in the dark. Yeah. Uh he's yeah. camera shy. Uh I I do like that. Th- talk about small geeky things I like as a wrestling fan. I as much as I liked your pitch of like <laughs> Priest comes out in the midst of all of that. Um, so smart of them. And they did it for a bunch of reasons. So smart of them to get the cash in out of the way. For sure. Because as all of that stuff is happening, of course, you're like, where's Priest? Like, so the fact that it was done and it was like, now we don't have to worry about the fact that everyone in this match was murdered. Um, yeah. I was very smart. 
Because I wouldn't have thought of that. And it's like, yeah, that would have been an issue afterwards of like, where the hell was Priest when Cody got hit by seven Samoans and a dead man came down <laughs> to True. kill people. So um thought it was good. But overall, I mean, I think it's going to be remembered as one of the best pay-per-views of all time because they <laughs> paced it right. As boring as night yeah. one was, it wasn't supposed to overshadow night two. And by the way, same as last year. I can't remember what sh- matches were on each night. So that's not how it'll be remembered. It'll be remembered as like, oh, yeah, that match wasn't good. They'll remember the matches they like and won't remember what nights they were on. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Yeah. I If, if I had to do another, like, little critique, I just don't like how it just felt like – and so dumb. It's, it's really small. But, like, everyone on night one who fought, essentially – was included again in night two and they're like all fresh and ready to go <laughs> you know what i mean like it's so small but like uh, it's just, it's that's weird. a good wrestling nitpick though i the only one where that really bothered me is again i i thought seth should have got killed especially doing what they did i like the idea that the only thing that cost McIntyre is his own hubris. I think they could have handed that up. I especially think in hindsight, you don't need Seth to look strong when he looks like the genius who unraveled Roman. Right. Right. Um, Uh, I I, I think CM Punk stuff in the SNL credits thing, like putting over Cody, I think that was cool. Um, And I don't even understand all the dynamics there. It just felt like that was a big moment. Yeah, I like that CM Punk is so likable and you know he's up to everything. Like, I I, I don't trust yeah. him at all. I love how no. they've played this of, like, he's saying nice things and he'd stab everybody in the back for a belt and, yeah. or, or for a podcast. And I think, I think that's a good quality to have. I, what I'm most excited about, and you touched on it, um, I think this is the best I've felt about like they always kind of do okay on like the men's main event scene like you didn't like the Gunther Sammy match at all a lot of people did it was not my favorite but like that match in the U.S. title match being like as good as they were and the tag team match being fun and good and most importantly like what a well-rounded show for the women. Like I, I know that like we can nitpick what should have been better, or what match was better. Like we were kind of talking about, but uh, like to have ten women on the card, and I, I genuinely care about over half of them. Like that mm-hmm. sounds, you know, like a pity party, but that's that's news for where women's wrestling has been. So. Um, I'm excited about that. One of these years, they could let a women fucking main event, but I, <laughs> not yet. Not no, yet, no, yeah. So it's only this is only the fortieth one. You break too many time. barriers at once, people will get mad at you. That's right. That's right. That's the lesson here. So BC. So my last question to you, Zach, as we wrap up this ranker thing, is now that you've watched Mania, what's the one match that can be built from this you're most excited to see? Is it Cody versus someone? Is it you know, rock somebody, Logan. Uh, I, I guess my Logan, maybe Logan, actually. Um, my first question to you is obviously we saw afterwards, not in the main broadcast, but like yeah. videos everywhere. Uh, Roman and Heyman sort of crying on stage yeah. and embracing and stuff. Do you think Roman goes into a big long break or do you think he's going to be get back to it? I think Roman gets ambushed by the rest of the bloodline. I think he gets kicked out with Heyman. I think Heyman's like his buddy. I would love if Heyman stuck around and that's Roman's way back in. I think mm-hmm. that's kind of fun, but um, I, I think that's what happens is we, we build up to um, Roman rocket next year. Sure. Um, Roman also revealed on night one, he's like going through active leukemia treatments, nothing that like should stop. But, uh, you know, I think time off will be good from the things he was saying. So that would be my guess is there's more of that, but I I think the bloodline could be done. We're recording this as raw started. I, I think it could be done tonight or Friday. Interesting. Okay. I'm, it's that specific feud, I guess. I'm excited to see what Randy Orton does. I wonder if they will pivot because I think pretty clearly the plan was LA Knight Logan at SummerSlam. Okay. 
Uh, and because they held off because I think they want that in Logan's hometown. Um, I don't know now because I, I want Randy everything. I'd be fine if yeah. Randy was um, – is Randy Cody's first important opponent because like he was Cody's mentor. You missed that part of his career, but like he was Cody's mentor and led a stable he was in. And like, we can just get like a feel good, feel good feud um, sure. while we wait for bloodline stuff. Um, that'd be good. But yeah, I'm, I think that's awesome that people are so excited about Randy. So I think that's yeah. really good um, for me. Um, I am going to go. Uh, let, let me pick an obvious one and not obvious one. Obviously, um, I'm I'm pumped for Drew Punk. I think I think yeah. Drew CM yeah. Punk when all of the shit that CM Punk can say and be right about is gonna be awesome. Like, <laughs> oh, oh you had your right. moment, you know, and you I didn't do anything. You you know, um, so I think that'll be good, and I think they're gonna play their cards right, and we get that in Scotland, um, and I think that. Punk wants to be hated. And so I think that's yeah. going to be great. So yeah. that's the obvious one. The not obvious one. Um, I, I'm really excited about Jade Cargill. And uh, we kind of teased it. But like J- Jade Bianca, I think, is the obvious thing. I don't think we get Jade and Rhea in the same ring for like a year. And I think all of a sudden uh-huh. it happens and we're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like what, how many men die while those two like go to war? So I, I think it's the first time in maybe forever that I'm like, these two women stars are as over as, to me as anything else in the company. So I'm excited for that. And I just, I, I hope they beat the shit out of each other. But <laughs> I, I would say that are, are the things I'm most excited about. Um, I'm anticipating just because we touched on him, I wonder if Brock comes back. Mm. I I really wonder what his status in the company will be. Uh, Cause his, I don't want him back if the allegations are proven true. Um, sure. But if he's able to come back, there's so much <laughs> for him. And yeah. uh, so it's hard to resist that for me, but. I mean, bring him back. Who cares if the allegations are true that he's a heel. <laughs> you know i'm pretty strong heel that's pretty fine. pretty strong heel uh th- that is true uh god is it too late for him versus dominic that... <laughs> no it's not we, we can awesome. do it yeah we can, can we can do it tonight i hope it's happening got raw so yeah, so good show. and by the by the way next mania Braun breaker will be here so that'll be fun too do you think Heyman goes with breaker or no uh, if he was telling the truth, Heyman said he's, he's with Roman until he's done. Um, now while Roman's gone, I like the idea of him going with Jay, like kind of going with the bloodline. That's not going to be supporting rock. Everyone thinks that now we'll kind of get rock splits up, starts his own thing. And then the Usos eventually rejoin Roman. So I, I think Heyman does that. I'd love if I, I mean, Heyman and Braun is great. I don't think Braun needs him. I think he's very funny. I think if you're cool with him being a a dumb jock who's stronger than everybody. I Listen, I don't think anyone ever said Scott needed a mic man. Just no one knew how to treat Scott. Fair. That's fair. So you want him to talk less? No way. I want him him to have to talk for 10 minutes. All his booty mamas. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) They're all teeth. For sure. Fake teeth. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um okay so this was the raking show for and the flurry sports podcast that's right um the god tier match obviously cody yeah. roman night two spoiler alert closely worst followed match, by the philadelphia street fight yeah i'm so good <laughs> so good worst match is the usos, usos. Yeah, and is that pretty widely yeah yeah pretty widely it's like the one match they're like why was this on the card okay Fair enough. Now we are going to be doing some business stuff on the air here, Jake. This is what I'm going to ask you. Do we? Do you think we throw our game to next week? Do you, Do we just end the show and leave the people wanting more? No. No. <laughs> the, the people need Pete. They need the Pete's. I think the people game. need Pete, and it's related to college basketball. 
Kind of. Kind of. Not really, though. Kind of not really. Listen, I don't get paid enough to make these decisions. I, unfortunately, okay. I'm not sure you do either. But I, uh, <laughs> I if if I had a vote, we've teased it. Like, I think some people will skip through some of the stuff we just talked about to get to Pete. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they always do. They always do. So this was the ranking show. If you enjoyed this, go over to the Flurry Sports Podcast. We got another half an hour of show <laughs> that I think you will really Smart enjoy. Stuff. Uh, it's a long show, but I mean, this is going to be not even close to the longest show we've done. Uh, no. We've done a Marvel movie worth of 30 minutes before. of Pete feels like 23 minutes of us. Very at least. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so like, and subscribe to the ranking show, like, and subscribe to the Flurry sports podcast. And let's just go over to that game. Let's see if I can win it. Okay. It's game time. Once again, our third game and we're even right. Yes. Correct. Even Steven. Yes. yes. I, I, I won the $20 in victorious fashion in episode. Well, first episode of the season. I don't know what number it is. But then last week, you stormed back. Stormed back with the movie mashup game. We're even. We're back at zero. Uh, I think that's what we're saying. We're not saying both get $20. We're back at zero. Yes. And Jake, you have a game this week where I can earn $10. Again, every single week, we're keeping track. Someone's earning $10 every week. Unless we bet a little bit, Shohei Otani style. That's and, right. You know, one of us gets a little bit more. But explain the game this week. What do we got? Well, I will say much anticipated, folks. I'm very excited about it. I think excited about how it turned out. We'll see. Pete may have played it too close to vest, but this game is called uh, Pete's Perspectives. Uh, Ooh, okay. My dad, Pete Osmond, uh, for fans of the Playing Catch Up podcast, new episodes this week. Uh, plug. Um, but <laughs> for fans of that, you know my dad, but uh, Zach definitely knows him. Uncle Pete, they call him. Uh, but for this game. A lot game, of people do. That's right. A lot of people do. About 10 people to be exactly. But short and sweet, dad is describing uh, sports figures in this. I have cut out the pieces where I ask him, hey, how do you feel about so-and-so? Uh, and that is sure. exactly the question. What? How do you think and how do you feel about so-and-so? And – Dad just gives his thoughts uh, as he discovers and as Zach will discover. It turns out a lot of the people asked about, he doesn't like. And he was like, do <laughs> I get anyone here that I like? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, for Zach to not make it impossible, we've got 10 stops today. To make it timely, these are all related to college sports. Uh, okay. As we record this on the eve of the championship game, uh, having as we record or right after we record. so. Mosek, all either football or basketball. Okay. Um, all are currently relevant. Not every entry is a like current coach, but they have made sure. news or are relevantly talked about overall. And they're all coaches. They are all coaches, Zach, except okay. the wild card. There's, you gotta watch out for the wild card gotta watch out for the wild card that's right it's a jefferson rule there's <laughs> one in here that is not a coach and is okay. not really related to uh college athletics at all is a sports person okay if you okay. get that person right two points you need seven wow. points to win this game okay okay i think this is gonna be tough i'm excited for this Okay, and I'm not because I I re-listened to the tape after Lindsay correctly called out I got grilled by you in week one. I'm not going to give you any tips, but I do think it's fun when you ask questions and things that they got loud, but I may do a better job of not answering you depending, <laughs> depending on <laughs> how it goes. But I think it comes across pretty clear, so we'll get started and you just get to guess who it is. Okay, okay, we'll see how this first one goes. Again, so Jake just asked his dad, how do you feel about this person, right? Correct. Okay, here we go. Uh, I think that he was one of those that doesn't immediately strike like hatred in you. But at the same you know, good for good first players, extreme fairly arrogant. <laughs> um okay. my issue with him. <laughs> is some of his friendships with with other coaches that I really, 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 really don't like. 
he helped hold some of those coaches in high high esteem, and I think that they should be castrated and then shot. And <laughs> wow. um, so, hardest quote. By while the way. I don't really really dislike him, I dislike his taste. Uh, my guess is we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be buddies when it came to the political thing, and I have no idea what his political thing is. <laughs> like it line up. Right. No. So that's what I think about him. Okay. Um. Okay. Wow. Came out um, the gate strong, by the way. That's how I knew this was going to be a good game when he hit him with the, I hope they're castrated and then yeah. shot line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that took me by surprise. I had somebody in mind the entire time, but then honestly, when he said, like, I thought he was going to say he is friends with coaches he really likes and it, he's mad about that, but it's coaches he really hates as we mm-hmm. found out. Um, I'm trying to think of what I can ask that even makes sense because I I don't think I should be able to ask sport. Um, personally, I don't think. No, I feel okay giving this I guess hint because I didn't I don't want to be the thing that leads you astray. Uh, this person, not currently coaching, and I would say like the least out of our list. Like he's not in a news story this week or anything like that. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Because I have someone in mind. Do I get one guess and we're done? Incorrect. Correct. I think you get one clarifying question. Your choice. I don't care if you ask sport because it's I've I've given you a 50-50 shot. So if you want to waste it on (laughs) basketball Um, football, go for it. But um, I'll give you one clarifying question for each person. Okay. How? Okay. But but I get one guess at the correct one clarifying question. One guess. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hot. Not a current coach. So, did this person most recently coach in the SEC? No. Okay, it's not Nick Saban. That's who I was really mm-hmm. banking on. Political. Not currently a coach. Not currently a college coach. Could be an NFL coach. Okay. For the people listening at home, I was trying to read Jake. He did get Yeah, I I don't want to lead you astray in the game. Everyone here besides our wild card, which this could be our wild card. Uh, did I start you with the wild card? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone besides our wild card, famous for college coach. I didn't even do like uh right. Yeah, right. So I, right. I was saying they may still be a coach, but they may not be. Oh, a interesting. Coach. I wouldn't go that route. Okay, so it's not Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> okay. No. Really? Who is it? The political thing kind of threw me for a loop, I think. Um, I thought that was the least helpful part, is which all of these pricks probably don't line up with my dad. I am going with Coach K. He found it, folks. He found his groove. Wow, really? There. Yep, Coach K. I wow. was like, oh, he's totally on the football front. No, absolutely, it's Coach K. I was just trying to think of recently retired coaches. I, I, I have no idea of Coach K's politics, by the way. But okay. I don't think anyone knows anything about him. I actually thought my dad's thought <laughs> on it. I kind of agree with. Yeah, Pete, Pete's got a good read on him. Okay, you're one for one. A okay. little more hand-holding than I think I'll do the rest of the way. So go ahead, Zach. Take your stab at number two. Okay, Coach Two. Um, Do not care for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, seems to be an entitled piece of crap. Um, always one of the coaches that always in my mind seems to, you know, say we need to have accountability. It's Jimmy's fault. (laughs) Um, but I I don't care for him, uh, as a whole. I also think that if he was as good as he thought he was, he wouldn't be coaching where he is now. He'd move either to a different college conference yeah or the pros yeah he seems hard to work with yes uh, um yeah um uh, he also seems to me phony like he's one of these guys first pew of the church as he's dating the nun in the bag <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure all right all right okay okay so i had one person in mind and the church comment may have helped me. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping it did. 
does this person also coach? Well, I guess Coach K doesn't coach anymore. Does this person coach in the ACC? Correct. It's Dabo. It's 100% Dabo. Wow. Two for two. Wow. I mean, I don't know why I even thought that because truly the hints are Pete doesn't like him. He's entitled. He blames his car- uh, players. Could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I will say he starts to get it here. Coach K, I think, is going to be the hardest. He gets more descriptive as he goes in the game because okay. he gets used to it. I think I you are correct at like – I, this is not a bad hint. Uh, like it's a good rule. The first time you've ever played the game. Uh, Dad gets more descriptive about the end of his sentences. Um, so I think here the big hints were why hasn't he moved schools? And right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the church comment was good. Um, yeah, we've got some coming up, Zach. That you're just gonna have to guess how much does he hate people? Which <laughs> you know yeah, is yeah. gonna be fun. But yeah, I uh, this one was also one of my favorites, just because the straight out of the gates, I do not care for him. <laughs> it's a good yeah, one. Nope, nobody does. So he's spot on. Um, okay, coach number three. Um has come close he's probably my second least favorite coach okay. in in uh in college sports um <laughs> not only i mean he's had immense success but um he's covered up for his players for years he's in my opinion should be criminally liable for some of the stuff that's happened to people at their place um Hmm. another one that's really they they all are going to be somewhat arrogant but he comes off as a golly gee uh, i'm all about doing it the right way da 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 da. you know he's he's had kids play for him that shouldn't be in school like they all have but and he said he's covered up for kids with sexual assault stuff that kind of stuff so he's um, not my favorite. I'm sensing, I'm sensing a pattern here. I don't like anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got maybe three people on this list you like. So there you go. Okay. Little meta hint for you, Zach. There you go. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to cut that off. Um, okay. This one's tricky. So second least favorite coach, which... <laughs> I will review to you number one if it helps all time sure, because it's sure. not someone I asked about. Because <laughs> Bob Knight. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Dad not, hates so, Bob Knight. I may have gotten a good riddance text on the. <laughs> so this is his least favorite current coach. Though. Yeah, the <laughs> least favorite still living uh, okay. coach. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and then covered up for players with sexual assault. Kind of a hint. Kind of not unfortunately sadly not as much a hint as maybe it should be yeah um a lot of success yeah a lot of success right not brian kelly i don't think i mean he's not a current coach but not saban um izzo was one that kind of initially came to mind so could be izzo uh, I have a clarifying question. I don't even know what would help get me in the right sphere at this point. But <sighs> I think How... the most basic question would be helpful to you here. Okay, so I'm guessing it's a football coach. So I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to say, well, can I ask what conference he coaches in? Yeah, I'll tell you. He's Big Ten. Okay. So going through the Big Ten coaches, it's that fucking Greg Gard. Not really. I wish it was. Um, well, maybe. No, it's not. He doesn't have sexual Pete assault. Pete knows something? Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to think. Football's had sexual assault stuff, not basketball. Correct. Uh, could be Izzo. I don't. <sighs> Juwan Howard got fired, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but again relevant i'm not telling you it's Jawan, but just for later ones like yeah they're not all current coaches they're just all relevant oh it's a relevant coach not a current coach 
the only one who kind of fell out of that is Coach K. I'm just letting you know there uh, there are some folks who don't aren't going to be active coaches this year. You know, some you've circled around. I'm this one obviously isn't Saban. Saban's not a current coach. You know what I'm saying? Well, Harbaugh's not a current college coach. He's a current coach. You don't have to worry about that. It's college coaches. That's what they're known for and famous for. There's someone very obvious that I'm not thinking about. And uh, I guess Big Ten, man. I'm, it's not Urban Meyer. I'm I'm just going to guess Izzo. I really can't think of anybody else. It's Izzo. Oh, it is? Okay. It's okay. Izzo. Dad, you stumbled on something. Dad hates Big Ten coaches. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And, that's who, you know, he's a Badgers fan. And so to have the devil within, you know, True. like he's so close. Yeah, he he loves Izzo. I did cut out the part because it was too obvious. He was like, the only one who likes how much he pushes people is Draymond Green. I hate him too. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a nice giveaway. You yeah. hate Izzo too. And I think most people do. I like Izzo. I like Izzo. I, I guess I, also the institution thing kind of yeah. led me to Michigan State as well. But yeah. Yeah. I thought for a second when you were so hooked on football, you didn't even bring up Paterno. I was like, he's going to get stuck on Paterno. But but he's not current. He's. I know, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get bitched at you one way or another. So I'm trying to play it clean yeah. down the middle. All right, so yeah. you are three for three. You have not stumbled yeah. upon our double dare <laughs> yet. <laughs> I'm excited for that one. Will it be coach four. Let's hear. Sorry. <laughs> um well he's th- this coach is is a, a conundrum big word for you because extremely knowledgeable about the game like they all are but yeah. i mean there's gotten more out of his uh uh talent of his players than a lot of a lot of Correct. coaches um driven mm-hmm. hard-working yeah prickish <laughs> yeah uh, for sure cheated on his wife kind of guy you know yeah um good coach uh, un- unbelievably good coach mm-hmm. with who's had a um uh i think a tree of success around him with with mm-hmm. with, with other coaches highly respected by Everybody. other co- other coaches yeah. um but uh probably not the kind of guy you want to go on vacation with <laughs> you know very intense <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah seems that way yeah. but but there but got a lot of talent out of his players has had tons of success at the places he's been mm-hmm. at different levels so there yeah. you go i like that okay a little more favorable huh more favorable this person's not a current coach is he Mm-mm. this is bo ryan this is bo ryan i thought he was gonna drift you a little bit what clued you in the cheating on the wife thing cheating on the wife <laughs> intense <laughs> my favorite bit one of my favorite bits from my friends in high school is just doing anything wrong like someone would do something wrong it, it, pretend to be sam decker and then yeah. bo ryan would just <laughs> stare at him until he wanted to die essentially <laughs> I, it's one of my favorite bits just for wisconsin basketball it's like if you turn the ball over you just put your head down and start walking towards the bench like you don't even go back on defense you're like oh, i'm sorry bo um, and he just got elected to the Hall of Fame, obviously. Correct. He's the relevant one that I was trying not to very obviously point out, but like, you know, uh, you sniffed through that. I thought the different institutions thing, but you you held on to the intensity of Bo Ryan as all Wisconsin fans did. So that's good. But I, I thought he was going to lose you a tree of success. Oh, no. I mean, Bennett. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple others, but mostly Bennett. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. But okay, Zach, here we go. Well, hold on. I think I might have, I do have a disclaimer here. Okay. For okay. coach five. Dad yeah. uses the word gagger. He means a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It gets clarified in clip, but it comes out of the gate. And I just need to make sure we don't get canceled on our, our first trip into Pete's perspectives. Sounds good. Sounds good. Fair enough. Here we go. 
I think she just put out her gagger. How about that? She strikes me as a, a barmaid at the corner, about 75. She used to play, she, she used to bowl at Wagner's over, made up with a gagger hanging out of her mouth, and chasing the 40 year old when she's 60. Yeah. How about that? The gagger's That's a cigar. No, gagger's a cigarette. My Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, my guess is she probably doesn't in the recruiting sheet any more than a lot of them do. Yeah. She strikes me as the kind that doesn't really care a whole lot about the kid, more mm -hmm. about more about winning. And that's probably true of a lot of them. Yeah. Obviously talented. No knows what she mm -hmm. she finds a way to recruit really good players. So mm -hmm. but um She's not my favorite. <laughs> no. What do you think about her wardrobe? Most of it doesn't fit me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's good mind right at the end. You be with a zigger. Um, gotta be Kim Mulkey, right? <laughs> yeah, or our neighbor, I guess. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's Kim Mulkey. Um, that is the most concerned I've ever been to one of these answers. He just started. I was like, what are you talking? <laughs> like, you're gonna say <laughs> yeah. something that gets us fired here. Um yeah, it's Kim Mulkey putting out a gagger going bowling at the <laughs> local, Yeah, he went down spot. an interesting path to start the answer for sure. Do you get that vibe from her that she's like, because I think she's like a upper crust. He he thinks she's like, she just crawled out of an alley. Um, Yeah, I, I think I'm more towards Pete. I, I think he's definitely, she's definitely smoking a halftime for sure. Yeah. Also, retweet if you use the word gagger. True, true. How many cigarettes has she put out on that white girl's arm before? <laughs> that made her question. transfer again. All right, um, here we go, okay. Zach. Number six. Halfway through, five for five. Great start. Um, you need yeah. just two more points. Okay, here we go. And the wild card is still here. Oh, that's right. The gentlemen. wild card's out there. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I think... To be honest with you, um, I like him fine. I think it's weird that, that, you know, you can make all the money he's made for years and years yeah. and years out of, out of blessing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And kind of a shtick, you know, you know, it's <laughs> okay. like, eh, you know, I seen him once and he, yeah, you know, if you compare them, you know, to this and that and whatever. He might be good. Well, there you go. You're a genius. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is the wild card, ladies and gentlemen. And this has to be Mel Kuyper, right? It is Mel Kuyper. Wow. I love it. I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. Pete did a good job that time. Good job by Pete. Good description. Uh, I thought the, uh, the impersonation was actually pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, not bad. Not bad. He's done it before. Yeah, I also love his, like, curious bewilderment at him. Like, I don't, I kind of like him. I don't know how he makes his money. Yeah, that's true. This is, for sure, I would think the most positive he's been about a person so far. Yes, that's true. I would say his most negative and most positive are still coming up. Really? <laughs> I mean, I guess he wasn't negative about Coach K. Just more so the people he surrounds himself with. Yeah. Uh, he was obviously, he hates Tom Izzo more than one of the people coming up. But like, yeah. it's a, like, a, it's a, it's a rage <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. uh, and to be honest, it, uh, it might be coming up right now, Zach. Wow. Okay. Coach number seven. Afri. Oh, let's, let me put it this way. I have higher esteem for dog shit than I do this <laughs> coach. Um, and he still probably isn't my least favorite coach. No. But he's really close to the bottom of the barrel. I I mean, this jackass is, is um, <laughs> from the little rascal's comment, Darla, you're the scum between my toes. <laughs> um, he is a unlikable complete jerk if there ever freaking was one yeah and uh truth be told i think that he did unspeakable things to his grandmother and i can't prove it, <laughs> I, can't prove it. <laughs> now, I, I 
Um, I don't like them. <laughs> I will say that's the first one I asked, and I could hear your wife chuckling in the background <laughs> when I asked about them. So I think that's a good sign. Yeah. Okay. I wonder. I All the feeling... hits, right? All the hits there. <laughs> he did. I think you may not have edited the name out. No comment. <laughs> okay, so let, I mean, let's use all of our context clues that I'm going to say who I, I'm pretty sure it is. So he hates this person a lot, obviously, which hates means him. close to home has to be within the conference. Enemies within the camp. Um, I don't know the. Is there a grandmother thing, or is that just Pete? Pete, that. that's Pete. Just that's the accusation he could hurl at someone that's worse than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I was like, oh, there's a story I need to look up. Um, I think it's Fran McCaffrey. Which I'm, I'm siding with Pete on this one. That guy sucks. It is Fran McCaffrey. Would you have gotten it without the I don't name think left so. in? I, I, I would, maybe. Yeah. I would have for sure thought Big Ten. But... I thought, I think part of the fun in that. So I'm really bummed that I didn't quite get it. Because I do think part of the fun is, is do I hate him? Sure. Does he occupy any of my brain power? True. No. So the fact that like dad yeah. loathes him, like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. couldn't quite hear it there, but my mom is cackling in the background because he can't fully watch Wisconsin Iowa games. Like he will get up and leave the room and come back. So he's not <laughs> overly exposed to Fran McCaffrey. I get it. I get it. I, I, yeah. His family has to do that too. Just leave for a while. Take vacations. He did say I cut that part out, not the name fully, so maybe I could have left the other part in. Um, but I cut out the part where he's like, didn't do any crimes like any other coaches, but boy, is he unlikable. Yeah, he's worse than them, for sure. <laughs> there we go. All right, Zach, yeah. you now ch chasing something bigger than the win. You're chasing a perfect mm. score. Got it. And that's for pride, which is more than money. That's better than money. That's all I care about. Okay, here we go. I have hopes. Um Again, that what I will say about a lot of these guys that I don't like is I bet you they hate uh, um, social media with a passion because yeah. they used to be thought of as uh, people didn't know anything about their personal life or any mm -hmm. of that other stuff. This guy here obviously can coach. He's very, yeah. he's very good, like all these guys. But it's, he's done it more places. More places at different levels, had success. He's um he's fine. Um, bent his girlfriend over a chair in a restaurant. What's the <laughs> guy caught? Yeah. Um, but uh, his wife was not happy. No. <laughs> that was the report. That yeah. was the report. Talented guy. I wonder if this guy here is going to have more trouble. He, he's you know he's still coaching. Yeah. But he's got to be seventy. Yeah. Um dealing with today's players because he is mm -hmm. he is of the mindset that he's knows more than anybody and everybody and and is not really willing to bend with today's players much yeah so but do, it's not he's not what he's an arrogant Jack yeah Jordan, oh but, my gosh he's unlikable yeah yeah <laughs> just like, it's just saying the same type of thing it's just over like, oh over. god, I like it's so generic. I was like, oh, I hate that guy. Yeah, entitled. Um, it's are we sensing a pattern? Um, I, I will say Pete lets him have it, folks. This is maybe yeah. this is good context to start. My dad is literally the most mild mannered person you'll right. ever run into. So this level of like angst rhyme through yeah. him is like <laughs> a lot for him. So I like that he just let him have it with the girlfriend comment. It is, and that sounds so familiar that I know this story, but I can't match it to the person. Um, my question is, did they – what what conference do they coach in? This is revealing, but I, I have to look it up. Okay. I, I think I know who it is. Damn. I think they may have switched or s stayed in the same conference. Okay, go for it. Or Say, say the conference. Is it – Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't even answer. Try to get out of it. It's the Big East. Oh. Okay, so not who I was thinking. Um, Big East. 
Now I have to remember all the teams in the Big East now. <laughs> that's well, that's tough. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Villanova, we got Creighton, we have Marquette. <laughs> it's McDermott. Uh, we got wow. <laughs> it's got to be McDermott. That son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> we got UConn. I don't think Hurley did anything. <laughs> I can't remember where this coach coaches, but I'm just gonna say his name. I guess. Uh, I don't think he coaches in the Big East, but I'm gonna go with Patino. Ah, oh, you found it. It's Patino. It is Patino. St. Okay. John's is in the Big East. Wow. I mean, that's big, dude. Good for them. Good for St. John's. <laughs> Damn, you landed on it anyway. That was the only hope. But yes, famously did screw his girlfriend in a restaurant. The the two coaches that immediately popped into my mind with that was Calipari and Patino. Yeah. But then it's like both of them, I can't distinguish who did what at this point when they were in Kentucky and Louisville there or in Memphis and Correct. wherever they've all gone. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Calipari right. switched schools, by the way, still in the sec. <laughs> True. Um, we are at number nine. We got two left. Here we go. For perfect score. Here you go. Yeah. Um, I think he's I underrated. Think. I think this coach is underrated. Wow. I think that he gets, um, unfairly i mean he's paid a lot of money so Mm -hmm. but he gets judged unfairly for the for the place he's at and the amount that they win Mm -hmm. um you know and so there's the deal that he hasn't made it to the you know all the way to the promised land type of deal yeah um if this university decides that it's time to cut ties. Careful what you wish for, because you do a lot worse. You can do a lot worse. Yeah. Take that, Zach. <laughs> okay. Snuck that uh, in at the end. Yeah. What was that about? Because it was so generic, or what? Yeah. Or is it a school I hate? Or a person I hate? No, I think it was about something that you did that you didn't get to hear. <laughs> oh, okay. This one. I, oh, I think every other one I've had a lean. I don't know if I have a lean right now. Hmm. Um, Never made it to the promised land, but he's a good coach. Obviously, that has to be the hint. And hmm. Pete seems to really respect this guy. Hot seat. So, hot seat. I don't think it's Big Ten unless it's fucking Greg Gard. If Pete has his opinion on Greg Gard, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> it might be Greg Gard. Greg Gard. It's Greg Gard. It's Greg Gard. <laughs> what? Bad opinion, Pete. That's not good. <laughs> He's such high esteem. He loves him <laughs> so. Be careful what you wish for, he says. <laughs> he did say that. Um, I'll 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 be okay if we fire him. You know what? I'll I'll risk it. He hasn't quite made it to the promised land, Zach. He has not. That's true. That's a fact. He has not done that. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, Pete. Okay. Last one. Perfect score. I'm going to be really bummed out if I lose on the very final question. Here you go. But, yeah, here we go. You don't know this. No, no. No, I, I do not. Um, He's, again, probably not anybody you'd want a vacation with. Yeah. I have a lot of respect yeah, for this guy. I And I... um. Part of it's the old guy thing in me a little bit that, um, you know, he possibly because they were, he's still very successful, but a little more successful in the old type of college system where people couldn't leave. So he could have uh, lots of recruits for (laughs) one position type, type of deal. But um, no, I don't. Do I know that he, he was up and up? And I'm not saying he gives two shits and a hoot about academics. Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah, I I don't think he does. But 99% of them don't. don't. They don't yeah. care. Um, no, I think he's one of the greatest college coaches. Mm-hmm. Would you take him on vacation? <laughs> well, he'd have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Stinger right at the end for you. Yeah, tough, tough standards by Pete. 
Um, I'm going to go. I don't want any hints. I don't want nothing. Can I make one quick comment? Two shits in a hoot. <laughs> Two shits in a hoot. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Honestly, honestly, yeah. Not bad. I think this is Nick Saban. Zach, you've just gone 10 for 10. Woo! There we go. There we go. Up wow. 10. Up, up pride. I'm... I'm surprised, honestly. I thought it was going to be, I mean, it was tough. None of them were easy. In hindsight, I really held your hand on Coach K. <laughs> I should have Kind just, of, but like. Kind of, but no. I, so this is the first time we played that game. Um, I think Dad did a good job. Yes. Toe in the line. He was pretty undescriptive. I think we could have been more random than Mel Kuyper. But, you know, it was For a good sure. squeeze in. I mean, I think the biggest giveaway was the Mel Kuyper one. So it was random, but he described it in such a way where it's like, it has to be him. Correct. But... I think so too. That that or Kim Mulcahy. <laughs> yes, true. Um, Yeah, that's true. But people at home, I think may have struggled a little bit more. I think because I know your dad, I kind of um, got some of it. But I will say, you may have held my hand with Coach K. I tried to distinguish pretty fucking hard. Are they a current coach? Are they not a current coach? And the yeah, entire I time I was still playing that game with every the single The only one. piece that maybe you would have gone off the rails is I think you, and I'm glad I didn't give this hint because you went perfect. Um, I was a little worried in the first one. Like you were so football oriented. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That was I really the only thing. Adjusted. When uh, the only two football coaches on here are Dabo and Saban. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, but no, I think the folks at home, if I had to guess, had a much harder time with Bo Ryan. I thought that was impressive because sure. yeah. cheating on wife and being intense to a non-Wisconsin fan is not that descriptive of a uh, college <laughs> basketball coach. It honestly would have been the first two things I said about Bo Ryan, who I love. Sure. He's, he's one of my favorite coaches of all time, and I would have led with that. And the mix of like dad obviously likes him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Wisconsin little different tone for the Wisconsin coaches versus some of the others. I well, Pete's loyal. That's why <laughs> yeah. but, but Pete would never fire a coach, and I I appreciate <laughs> that. True. Yeah, the great guard one's wild. <laughs> the great guard one's wild. <laughs> what's the best? We'll end it this way. What's the best line he had in the whole thing? <laughs> I mean, there was a okay. Yeah, is the um, one that sticks with you? Because for me, I I, say, I love the little rascals reference. That one confused me. <laughs> I will say that one was. McCaffrey, I mean, you are the scum between my toes. <laughs> I mean, that's like that really. He was going as hard as he could. He could have just said, I fucking hate that guy. And it wouldn't have hit as hard. No, like, that's really, like people yeah. often ask me, what is your dad's like go to swear word? He mm -hmm. like he swore cows when he farmed, but like, he didn't like mean it. He does that when he's like really angry. Like it's some yeah. kind of deep held metaphor. Okay. Okay. It's a great game. Great game. Great first appearance in season eight by Pete may see more of Pete later on the season. I think, Oh, we're back from the game. We didn't just record the first half of the show. We're here. And I won the game and Pete made on honestly, Pete Pete's performance was MVP worthy. It was incredible. It was MVP worthy. He's nervous about it. So I, I think, you know, really? kudos to Pete. Uh, you know, people learned what a gagger was. Uh it was, it was <laughs> yeah, it was a good moment for everybody. Two shits in the hip made a good comeback. So I think he, it'll he be had good. some aggressive moments, but I think I think he came off as endearing to the people. I was so close to asking him what he thought of Jimmy Carter. <laughs> yeah for sure a little heartwarming in there yeah he loves it's so funny he loves jimmy carter i yeah. we in real life pulling back the curtain for a bit zach and i have real life not doing great medically grandparents and mm -hmm. uh i'm not sure if i've heard my dad more most of than he's like i don't think jimmy's gonna make it and i was like oh <laughs> little did he know by the way jimmy's Kicking. hospice ain't what it used to be and uh <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy's proof of that. But all that said, fun game uh, for this week, Zach. I mean, we'll just end things on uh, anything. Anything else you need to talk about this week? Anything funny for the people? What are your Honestly, thoughts on the eclipse? 
Uh, it was incredible. Uh, I, I think Caitlin Clark probably made the eclipse happen as well. She's God's gift to uh, everything. She's going to Indiana I, and so is the eclipse. So That is true. Uh, Diana Trossi or whatever, I think she yeah. doesn't like Caitlin Clark. Uh, so she can go straight to hell. Uh, Undertaker could take her too. Um, but I don't know. It's We're entering into a weird time in sports. We're just about to start the NHL NBA playoffs. So yeah. Maybe that'll be interesting. NHL will be. NBA? Is it... Dra- Am I just on the outside, or is it drastically uninteresting? <laughs> I don't um, know. They have done such a poor job getting us yeah. to care about the teams who are actually good. And I, I gotta tell you, I already saw the NBA Finals. It was the NBA Cup. We could have ended the season there. We could end it there. You know it's going to be funny. You and I are going to be forced to care about it, potentially, the playoffs. Oh, I'm sure. One way or another, I'm going to be all in. I can oh, tell you that. yes. I won't be. That's not a possibility <laughs> for me, but uh, uh, there could be, which is, is this, how is, I don't know if I've ever cared less about NBA basketball, and it might be the Timberwolves year. It's not. That's what you think. I if they win a championship, I can't wait to hear what you say about Rudy Gobert. <sighs> that will be bad. That'll be painful. However, not knowing exactly where the standings are, other than Timberwolves being in the one seat, I still, yeah. still, I believe, I still stand on my preseason prediction of, or early season prediction of Timberwolves getting a high seat and the Warriors beating them first round. All I know is I've never been more disappointed by someone than Tyrese Halliburton. I just started caring about him. He's not that good. He can shoot, kind of, sometimes. He can kinda pass. Sometimes I don't know. The boy can pass. The boy can pass. He's overrated, and Draymond Green needs counseling. That's what I've learned this season. That's the NBA, baby. That's what they got. That is what they got. The Lakers are bad. LeBron's just, <laughs> like, straight-up cranky. LeBron's making his son join the NBA suitor because he wants to leave. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> that is good. Meanwhile, NH- NHL's great. I can't. I can't name three great. players yet. Um, but still, man. still waiting for that. NHL needs to market themselves better. This past week, they had one of the fastest fights of all time. Two seconds into the game, where everyone dropped their mitts and just started throwing hands. That's yeah, awesome. I, I do love that. I wish that happened in the street. <laughs> yeah not on ice where it's all slippy yeah sound sure. goes off and we're just fighting in the intersection i think that'd be good true yeah interesting time in sports things will start to heat up we got the nfl draft coming that'll dominate all the headlines while other sports are actually going on that's right by the way baseball actively happening baseball your dad and emily suffered a <sighs> tough week one <laughs> they did they lost in fantasy baseball uh it was tough, especially because they were like, we can't lose to Zach. And I was like, I think you might. Uh, right. Watch out. I want to go out on this note, unless you have so- anything else. No, one- no, no. I'm desperate for you to say something yeah. of interest. Okay. So <laughs> one last WrestleMania thing. And it, I got to tell you, I think it's going to be the title of the podcast. I'm going to milk this for all it's worth. So I watched it with Lindsay. Yeah. Knows very little about wrestling. She used to watch old rock promos, so she liked that. Great. She ended up liking Randy Orton. Nice. She couldn't remember Seth Rollins' name for the entire time in a very D'Angelo D'Artagnan type of way. Yeah. So when she tried to say Seth freaking Rollins, she knew it was a very white name, and what she came up with was, oh, that's Jason freaking Bateman. (laughs) That's good. That's good. It was very good. She's like, I just know it's something white. What's his name? And I'm like, that is a pretty white name. I, I never really thought about that. My my last WrestleMania takeaway, how come I'm never surprised by what celebrities there? Oh, Drewski's in a wrestling? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, wow, never would have guessed. Little Wayne. Yeah. Snoop had his moment again, too. Which Snoop fam- did have his deserved. moment. Snoop lied about how many people were there. <laughs> he had to get a 420 <laughs> reference in there, yeah. That's so good. Uh, you know, thank you for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed. Next time, we hope you you listen. And in the meantime, don't listen to the nerds. Look right at it. Look up. Soak it in. How am I supposed to see the sun with sunglasses on? All year, they tell you don't look at the sun. Now it's gone, and I can't look at it. 
You, you know who's telling telling you not to look at the sun? People who want you to miss it. They're looking at it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Don't look yeah. at the sun. Look away. Well, I'll I'll tell you what it looks like. Don't worry. You can That's trust right. Have you ever do you, have you ever known a millionaire who didn't look at the sun? No. So let's get moving. Swing to the furry sports room. Listen up and let your worries just snooze. Grab your popcorn, settle in. Let's have a blast with Zach and Jake, the furry sports podcast. 